Okay, there's just one more job we have to do. It smells a lot better than that bun over there. So how good is this? We're almost there. It's been a heck of a journey. Yep. And next week, next week we're going to uh, put all the all the trees in. We've got about eighty percent of them, I guess. Yes, we've got all the family coming. The kids are coming, and yeah, it's going to be quite. A, it's going to be a weekend okay. of it because we got the first first load delivered yesterday. Uh, yeah. That's our that's our greens. So um, I guess that you call it our nitrogen carbon sitting on the other side. Our browns, and we have other browns around the place. Um, so it's just can't wait to get it in the ground. It's just uh, the, the soil is as good as we're going to get it in the 12 months we gave it, I guess. Yeah. But um, we just got to get it in the ground and be the first, the first stuff that you know, the first produce, I guess, for the farm, which is uh, pretty exciting. Yeah, absolutely. Looking forward to it. Can't, can't wait. wait. <laughs> and a good day. Long time coming. About a year ago, we started building this orchard. It's about, it's just under two acres. So what is that? It's like 7,000 square meters roughly. Um, and we built this this four rail steel fence all the way around uh, to keep the, the cattle out. Uh, but then we had to put the mesh on there to keep the, the smaller animals out, the wallabies, you know, our hares and things like that, that which will uh, get in there and start eating our, our vegetables. So we call it an orchard. It's probably better to be described as a, a food forest because our, our vision is to have you know, 50 or 60 different varieties of fruit and nut trees in here, but also um, a lot of undergrowth of vegetables and shrubs. So it'll be multiple layers and it just produce all the food that we need in terms of the greens uh, on the farm. It was quite a mission building the fence. Uh, the, the fences are in, the, the lengths of the iron were, were three panels long. Thank goodness we had the, the posi track at that stage. We can bore the holes and we could uh, we can mix the concrete on site. So. All the concrete had to be mixed and you can see there's, a, there's like a, uh, we call it a mowing strip, we don't use it that way, but it has to keep the dogs from digging underneath the fence. It goes all the way around the whole perimeter. It was, it was a massive job. Um, I'm proud to say I was involved in about 70% of it, which is great. You ever had a soil test done? They test soil uh, using a pH test and a pH test records your, your potential hydrogen in the soil. That's where, where the pH comes from. And uh, it's on a 14 point scale. Seven is in the center of that scale, so seven's neutral. So you want your soil to be as close to seven as possible. Mine, unfortunately, when we tested it, it's like 3.4. So it's very acidic. Anything less than seven is acidic. Anything more than seven is alkaline. So this is acidic. That's because when I built the big dam, I moved like 600 loads, truck loads of that marshy soil up to here. And I've since learned that marshy soil is acidic. So that's one of the many mistakes I've made. And now I have to try and rectify that. Um, and how we do that is we pump lime into the soil. Lime. Gypsum also help break down the clay the soil because that marsh soil has very clay so it help out do that and we're going to put you know organic fertilizer in here as well um, we've already gone through this whole process once as we build and prepare this this large orchard and uh, and we did that just before summer and we planted a, a summer crop uh, of lots of different grasses and things in the ground to try and improve that soil and you might be wondering how by planting you know, see grasses and things in there, how that's going to improve the soil. Well, think back to your high school biology, basically. Plants photosynthesize, and as they photosynthesize, they draw out the carbon out of the carbon dioxide of the hair, and they push that carbon in, as a liquid down to the roots, and, and into the roots, it's basically simple sugars, and the simple sugars feed the microbes, that, that microbial life that's in the soil. Um, and that carbon is, is, and that's basically how you sequester carbon. The carbon gets drawn out of the sugars into the microbes and the microbes store it in part of the molecular structure, I guess. So the more plant material you can put on here, the more carbon you can pull out of the air. And most importantly, the more you can feed those, the microbes and you improve the soils that way. 
So we've already done this once, we're going to do it again. We're going to get a machine in here and we're going to slice the soil. You don't want to till it, as if you till the soil you get to kill the, the microbial life. So we're going to slice the soil, put the, the, uh, the lime in there, the organic fertilizer, the gypsum, and with, with a winter crop of seeds now. Because as you know, in winter, not a lot grows, but these, this winter crop will, will grow during winter and they keep pumping the carbon into the soil uh, to improve it. We've got to get the plants in, the trees, the nut trees, the fruit trees, the vegetables. We've got to get in, all that in this, this, uh, this spring. So we've got a few more months to, uh, to try and improve uh, the pH level of the soil. The first step is, is we have to mulch all this. This is the leftover of the summer crop we put through. You see corn and radish tops and various grasses in here. Uh, sunflower seeds as well, sunflowers I should say. And we, we have to go through and mulch all this first and get it ready to, to slice I suppose. Before he, he mulches all this, I want to dig down to have a look at this. In this, this one little spot here, we've got radish. That's radish, so there's a big radish underneath there for sure. Um, we have sorghum still, there's the sorghum around here. Um, there's, the, there's the chicory, there's chicory and chicory. And so I want to dig to the bottom of that. It's also a forage rape. I don't see any right in this vicinity. There's another one which there's plenty of in, in the orchard. So let's have a quick dig down. So you can see that radish all the way down here to here, um, which is good. That's all good organic matter in the ground. That'll break down once he comes through and mulch to the top of it. Now, although that's still very clay, look at the root system that's there down there now. Look how long that root is there. And that's what you need. You need all those roots all the way down, putting the organic matter into the soil. So here's a nice little batch of forage, forage rape. So I was going to dig that up and see what the roots are like. I have no idea what they're like in these plants. That shovel went in pretty easily. Yeah, so look at all the fine roots, fine roots on that, which is good. It's really helping breaking that soil up. Oh, that smells a lot better than that one over there. Chris Plowman from the Hinterland Help and tell me Rural Services. Rural Services up in Mullaney, yeah. Correct. And uh, so he's been helping me a couple of times already, and it's going to be plenty of work in the future. So this is a, a yeoman's plow. Um, that's that's the the brand of it, which is and it's a key line. It's a type of key line. So it doesn't actually till the soil, does it, Chris? No, that's right. No, it just puts a very neat um, slice in the soil uh, down, nice and deep. Uh, the whole idea of the unit is to basically encourage deeper root growth um, and introduce oxygen and water down into the soil profile. Yeah, so this is all, I've had this custom built. So the plow just came basic by itself and then uh, I sourced this, uh, which can hold 330 kilos of fertilizer. Yeah. Um, and then it's got an eight outlet uh, turbo jet on it. So yeah. I've hooked it up. So I have four outlets um, that uh, release the fertilizer underground anywhere sort of from that 16 to 22 inches deep in the soil um, and then we have the four outlets up, uh, at the surface as well and they are actually in line with the the rip line so as that rip starts to fold and close that fertilizer is also falling down into that rip line so we have fertilizer along the whole depth of that rip in the soil yeah and and we just in the hopper we just put the uh the lime the lime concentrate for one of better words yeah the uh calci prill yep. yeah and the organic uh, fertilizer mix. Yeah, so there was the terra firma uh, impact lime, um, which is a lime based uh, fertilizer built on a chicken manure pellet. Yeah. Um, and it's also got a lot of other trace uh, minerals in it, which are really good for legume growth, boron, uh, manganese, and that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, and then there's also a custom blend that they do up for me here in this location, um, which has got a small amount of phosphorus as well. Okay, so we're going to go through, you're going to stick this stuff in the ground, and then you're going to follow through with the seed. 
afterwards. Yeah, that's right. The um, the cover crop then that we'll plant after we go through and deep and deep rip this place um, is also a gain for encouraging um, soil growth. So there's a lot of deep rooted and uh, sort of tap rooted stuff like chicory, mm. radish, turnip, um, and eventually they all break down and become part of the soil as well. Yeah. So you can see the fertilizer coming out at the bottom of these fur boots. Yeah. So that'll be going down at the very bottom of the rip hole. And then there's also this outlet at the surface. And today, about day three, we're going to, we're going to plant it out, right? So what, what have we got here? Yeah, so this is the last part of the process. Um, this is a custom blend that we have done up here for southeast Queensland. And being this time in winter, um, we're also looking for a little bit extra cattle feed. So we sort of blend some cereals in with our cover crop um, mix. So we've got oats, uh, barley, rye grass and rye corn. Yeah, and the leg are for the nitrogen. Correct, yep. And these deep tap roots just to try and get the organic matter further down and to break up the soil a bit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's just a natural way of getting um, penetration down deeper, um, increasing our, our organic matter. And as it breaks down, it's also introducing oxygen and water lower into the table. Mm -hmm. um, and it also does help pull up nutrients from down lower. So nutrients that wouldn't actually normally be present in the grasses because the grasses are shallow rooted. So you know it's the short end? Yeah, show me the show me the steps again. So short end, cut as close to the end of the bag. Yeah. This side, not that side, with the single line. Yes. Pull it through. Done. Oh. <laughs> you know how many times I wrestle with that? Chris is the, the diamond harrows. What's the what's what's the go with the this foamy stuff inside the tires? Oh, um, so I've filled those tires to reduce the chance of me transmitting you know seeds and that that I don't like. So it's filled it out, so I don't have to worry about catching all the rubbish. Yeah, and start start moving from farm to farm sort of thing. It's all done. We're, we're fortunately we're expecting a bit of rain this week, aren't we? Yeah, it should Monday. be three days, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. But it's only drizzle, I don't know, it's like five mil or something. Five mils, perfect. What would you expect we need to get this, you know, up and out of the ground? Oh, if, if we get five to ten mil over two or three days, it'll be in the second day, it'll germinate. It's all, you know, none of the seeds coated, so it'll just take off. Yeah, right. Bit of follow-up rain will be handy, though. Yeah, all right, cool. So, uh, thanks for that. One last question, really important question. What do you listen to when you're driving around in that air-conditioned cab? <laughs> Not the radio, because it's all oh, yeah. politics these days. And you can't get much research out here. Yeah, either. no, that's right. I actually just music. Hunt, no, hunting podcasts. Okay, there's just one more job we have to do before we can get the plants in the ground uh, at the end of this month. That is, we've got to get this water down to the orchard. It's about 500 meters, and this tank holds 96,000 liters. So here's a fun fact for you. It's a mathematics educator coming out of me. Um, every thousand liters weighs a ton. So 96 ton of water is sitting in that tank. So it's gonna gravity feed all the way down. It's probably uh, a 40 meter vertical drop, 30 to 40 meter vertical drop. So there's tremendous pressure down there. So uh, we're gonna do some trenching, roll out the pipe, get the taps in, and then we're just ready to plant.
So we've almost got the main lines of the irrigation in. Here I've gone with a, a 50 mil or an old terms two inch main line with one inch risers. And I've got these uh, these valves, uh, which on the other side of that valve will be a timer. So every row will have its own own timer. And then the spare taps are for hoses elsewhere. So we'll get these uh, get these posts in, flush the lines, and um, backfill. Good to go. So that's it. We uh, we hope you enjoyed that sort of timeline of events. I guess the next time you see us, we're going to be planning this out. And you'll get to see how this becomes an important part of our process. That's right. See you then. Let's get planting.